We are talking about thoughts, toxic thoughts, healthy thoughts, what each do to your brain as you think them. Remember where your mind goes, your brain will follow. Uh, whatever you're thinking about at any given time. You're, okay, every time you have a thought, when you're done with that thought, your brain is different than before that thought. Okay? <clears throat> you, because it, it never returns back the way it was before. It always, it brings past, it'll even take the old thoughts you had, bring them forward, put the new thought to it, change the whole thought, send it back. Right? So even the old thought doesn't stay the same. The new thought is put on top of the old thought. So, <clears throat> now, look, I just read to you uh, a bit ago, Isaiah 26, 3. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he's trusted in thee. Philippians 4, 8. This is one most everybody knows. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now you know what to think on, right? Which is what? What, what is the one thing that matches all those? The Word of God. Amen? So, just as you can choose to think healthy thoughts and speak healthy words, you can choose to think unhealthy, or what Dr. Leaf calls toxic thoughts, and speak unhealthy or toxic words. Whether you choose a healthy thought and word or toxic thought and word, you will be reinforcing previously healthy or toxic thoughts and words. Now that is super simple, but sometimes stating the obvious is necessary. Okay? Now, we should remember this when speaking to others or ourselves. Okay? You need to make sure that your speech to others and to yourself the Bible says, is spoken in grace, ministering grace to the hearer, the Bible says. Isn't that right? So you ought to talk to yourself and, to, listen, you shouldn't talk to others. I have to really be careful how I say this. You shouldn't talk any, you ought to talk to yourself and others nice, both times, right? And what I'm saying is you, shouldn't, you should never talk to others, you should never talk to yourself worse than you talk to others. Now, I could say it that way, and you go, okay, well, that's good. That's the good risk. So as long as I, however bad I talk to them, I can't talk to myself the same way. No, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm saying that how you talk normally is what's going to come out, and you should always speak well to others and speak well to and about yourself. Amen? Amen? Yes. Uh, you know, we have to start controlling the tongue because the tongue, you know, we said that the, wherever the mind goes, the brain follows, and generally, the mind follows the tongue. Okay? And I know the mind, you have to think the thoughts before the tongue can say it. But sometimes you get on a roll, stuff starts coming out. And, and, and honestly, that's why most conversations, if they go any length of time, they end up in sin. Because most people don't have enough word level in them to talk very long without getting out of the word. And you start talking pretty soon. You start talking one way, then you run out of whatever word level you got built up in you, and then you start talking garbage. Yep. And that's why you, I, I'm, I'm listening, you know? And so whenever I'm talking to somebody, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, that kind of thing, and we're talking about something, and we're standing there talking, that's great. When we get over on garbage, I'm going to walk away, right? And usually that doesn't take very long because most people's word level is not very much. And so we ought to be, now you say, it, doesn't it get boring that all you do is stand there and talk about the Bible? No. If you think that, you haven't gotten into the word very deep. Okay? The word is exciting. When you start to realize how, what God has done for you, what he's given you, not what you're going to get, what he has. See, it's, it's good enough to think about what's coming. But man, if you just look at what you got, that right there is enough to be given thanks every day, all day. Right there. So, now, we should remember this when speaking to others, to others or ourselves. If you believe the Bible, you must believe that you will have whatever you say. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. The thoughts and words you speak to yourself or others will be what measure you receive. Now this is, again, what we're going to look at in just a minute anyway. Let me explain this. When you speak positive, healthy words after thinking positive, positive healthy thoughts to yourself, you will rise to the level of your words. David had to encourage himself. 
Now, David could not have encouraged himself if David had a wrong self-image of himself, right? If he had said, see, it's one thing. He didn't say, and David went off by himself and said, you stupid thing. You always make these wrong choices, and now you are somewhere else whenever these people come in and did this to your, to your, to your village. And this was, and you know, I, can't, I can't believe I was that stupid. I don't understand why I always make the wrong choice. See, that's not what David went off saying. He went off and encouraged himself in the Lord. He had to go back, and he had to remember what God had said because all this other stuff is going on. And he had to go back and said, God, you made me. You anointed me. You anointed me to be the next king. I'm, I'm, I'm walking right before you. I mess up, but if I do, I repent quick. So God, I'm just, I'm, I'm, ten, I'm doing what you've called me to do. I'm doing this, yet, and I don't understand why these things happen, but I know this, I'm right with you. I know this didn't happen because you're trying to punish me. If you're trying to punish me, I'd be punished, not these people. Do you see what I'm saying? He had to have it in him. God, you called me. God, you said I'm the apple of your eye. God, you said that I'm a man after your own heart. You said these things, Amen. and I believe you. These guys, they want to kill me right now, and they're saying all kinds of bad things about me, but I don't believe them. I believe you. That's how David had to encourage himself in the Lord. See, you have to learn how to encourage yourself because you won't always have a cheering section, right? So you got to be able to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. So, all right. Now, it says here, uh, let's see, where are we at? Yeah. <clears throat> You will become what you think and say. As a matter of fact, you are now the result of what you have thought and spoken about yourself. You are at that level. Okay? You may be repeating what others have said about you, but until you believed what they said, their words had no effect on you. See, other people, listen, Paul said, uh, shall their unbelief set aside our faith? Is that going to make our faith of, of no effect? No. See, other people's words have no effect on you until you believe them. Now, when you're young, people can say things about you. You don't know to reject them. You just believe them because they're an authority figure or whatever it is. And those are some things that you might have to undo in the sense of going back in and seeing what God said about you. But you have to realize when you're an adult and you know that you can choose uh, what comes into your life and you can reject things that, that are trying to get into your life, then when you know that, then other people's words do not affect you other than what you let them do. But you have to choose and now, sometimes choosing, it, you choose by not making a choice, right. right? Just by default. You, you, just, you condone what they say. Or sometimes you just don't want to fight, so you agree with them, right? I'm not saying you should fight, but you should at least walk away, right? right? Uh, you bless them before you do. See, when you, when you bless them, okay, the Bible says if somebody curses you, you are to bless them. If you bless them when you start to walk away, then that nullifies the words that they have spoken to you, Amen. right? Now, un unless, of course, you took that word to heart and you go, yeah, that's right. Well, bless you, and then you walk off. I'm not talking about that, <laughs> right? I mean, sometimes you got to say bless you through gritted teeth, you know? <laughs> it doesn't always just flow out of your tongue, you know? But you need to realize that when you bless them, now, every, when you bless someone, okay, you can't bless without getting blessed. Why? Because you're sowing, you're going to reap. You get that? So you're, you are creating your own harvest, not taking their harvest. So, all right, now let's have to keep moving. I don't have time to go too far. This. Uh, it says, <clears throat> where are we at? There we go. Once you believe their words and began to think their words and speak their words about you, then their words become your words and you have received what you believed or thought and spoke about yourself. You see? So you have to set a guard it says to guard your, your heart. We've already talked about guarding your heart, about guarding your mouth. But you have to guard your heart. Jesus said, take heed to what you hear. Because what you hear is what will be measured to you. Right? So you have to learn to take heed. When you start hearing something head in a certain way, either stop it or walk away. Because if you partake in it, there will be a moment where you know, okay, now I have entered into this with them. But until that point, you can still walk away and leave that there. But as soon as you join in and go, yeah, I know just what, uh, okay. Now, see, even if you stop yourself there, you've already entered in. Now you have to back out. And you have to go, you know, really, we shouldn't be talking about this. You know, if you're going to talk about that person, go get them. And let's, let's talk about them while they're here. 
right? Give them a chance to defend something. Now that you backing out of it. But if you just agree with them and then you walk off, <clears throat> you have not detached yourself. Remember, we are all connected. But that connection has to do primarily with relationship. The stronger the relationship, the stronger the connection. And so whenever you make that connection with a person, if you enter into conversation with them, now you have created a stronger connection or relationship with them. So you have to separate that thing and walk away. And usually you have to say, you can do it by walking away and going, you know, Father, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have got involved in that. And I'm, man, I don't care. But that, that is after the fact, and you can do it. That's an easier way to do it. But that does, now see, the difference is that does not set up a guard next time. Okay? The best way to guard yourself against doing something a second time is as soon as you come to the acknowledgement of what you've done, make it public in the sense that you reject that publicly. Basically, what it comes down to is this. Embarrass yourself, right? <laughs> By speaking up and saying something so you know. See, once you tell a person, you know what? This is gossip. It's not the Bible. I'm not going to get involved in it. And I appreciate you not dumping your garbage in my ear. Now, you say that. Okay, it may be embarrassing for you or for, and or for them at the moment, but I promise you, they're not going to come talking in your ear again. Right? It may be embarrassing for you, but they're going to find somebody else to dump that garbage in. Right? And it's worth it. Yeah, then they'll go off talking about you. There you go. So, see? There you go. And, and, and yeah, and, you, and there you go, fulfilling Scripture, because woe unto you when all men speak well of you. Right? And now they're not speaking well of you, so you have fulfilled Scripture. So, there you go. All right. Now, okay. There are children that had parents that spoke negative things about both of them. I'm talking about having two children, two or more. One chose to believe what the parents said about them and became that. The other heard the same words but determined not to believe them and proved the parents wrong because they never accepted the parents' words as who they really were. Right? Now, I will tell you, I, I am blessed because, uh, you know, in even early years growing up, uh, my, my dad wasn't saved. He drank. He would have been, if everybody ever diagnosed me, he would have been diagnosed as an alcoholic because it was a common thing uh, for him drinking all the time, right? But let me tell you this. In all the years that I was growing up and in my mother and father's house, I never once heard them call me a name, tell me I was stupid, tell me I couldn't do, they never told me that I couldn't do something. They never said, oh, Curry, uh, you know, don't shoot that eye because you'll, you'll, never, you'll never be able to do that. No, everything, whatever I was thinking about at the time, they would say, well, if you apply yourself, you know, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you go after that thing and you study it and you apply yourself, uh, you can do it. That, that's what I heard, right? And, and I believe that, you know, that was God helping to orchestrate the path of my life. Because they were constantly always reminding me, and, and in some ways I know too, just as the famous kind of like, uh, you, you know, you're not going to act like those kids. You're not going to do it. And I said, why not? Because uh, you're my kid, right? And I got a reputation to stand. You ain't going to ruin it, right? So that, that might have been some of the motive, right? <laughs> but bottom line, it worked, okay? And I, and there, well, I'm not going to say I didn't do anything. I did quite a bit. But, <laughs> but there were some things I didn't do, all right? And, and the, the funny thing is, the things I did do, uh, I, I, I didn't want to get caught. But I, the things that I did, I did that I knew if I did get caught, it'd look worse on my dad than it would on me. So I was in rebellion. I ain't no doubt about that, at least at one stage in my life, right? But at the same time, I was also, I, there were things that, there were, there were limits to even my rebellion. Right, because my mother had raised me reading the Bible. I knew what was right. I knew it was in me. It was in me. I was just talking to my daughter yesterday. Uh, we're going over ages in uh, children, at what age they're able to do certain things, at what ages you should do certain things, and, you know, up to age one and two. And by age four, they should have a, a clear command of the language and be able to speak and carry on conversation and have whole sentences, that kind of stuff, and going on to some other areas. But also talking about foreign languages, that if a child does not learn foreign languages before the age of seven, they will never pick up the grammar like a native of that language. After, in other words, if they learn those languages, and a child can learn four or five different languages at the same time. 
different languages and keep them separated. And they can learn that. And if they, but if they learn it, if they start learning after seven, the ability to learn the language as a native speaker decreases. And if they learn after seven, anybody that learns a foreign language after seven, you can tell they picked that language up and they weren't a native speaker of that language, right? But if they learn the language before the age of seven, you cannot tell that they're not a native speaker, right? So it shows the importance, but it also shows how early you can start getting these different languages into children. M maybe not even fluency in it, but at least enough, if you're gonna do several different languages, at least enough so that they can carry on conversation and know the basics, and then later on they would pick it up, and as they pick it up, then they would start speaking it, even as a native, just because they had that basis before seven, right? So from about four to seven, that's three years, and you could actually take a child through between eight and 12 languages in those three years and have them fluent enough that anything, any one of those languages they continue practicing later, it would have the same grammar and they couldn't, nobody could tell if they were native speakers or not, right? So if you have children between four and seven, there you go, <laughs> get on it, right? So, now, now notice in the next part here, it says, um, yeah, this should also show you that what you say about others has a way of coming back to you. Okay? It's called sowing and reaping. Most often a person becomes what they say about other people because that is the thought on their mind most often. Okay? Let me give you an example. Everything that the Pharisees said about Jesus was what they were doing. Why? Because they were guilty of it and that tainted their vision of him and they were saying about him what was really in their heart and who they were. Right? They were constantly saying, hey, well, he's violating the Sabbath. No, they were violating the Sabbath, right? Every time, everything they were accusing him of, they were actually doing. And that's the way it is with most people. And so even the, the, the difference is many people can hide it well unless you're around them enough. That's why the church can be so fake. Because usually you're not around church people more than an hour or two a week. And so it's pretty easy to put on a mask and hide for an hour or two, right? But whenever you have community, whenever you're fellowshipping, when you're, when you're talking with people and, and involved in their lives, it gets pretty hard to hide some of those things. So, now, another strange phenomenon happens also due to the words people speak about others. When you constantly speak negative, unhealthy, or toxic words to someone, that person becomes what you say about them toward you. You get that? If you're constantly saying a bad thing about this person, okay, and somebody brings them up, oh, yeah, well, you know, man, they're, they're liars, or they're this, or they're that, or whatever. Whatever you're constantly saying about them, that, even though you haven't said it directly to their face, they will start acting that way toward you, right? If you start talking about them, uh, well, you know, they're just, man, they're just hateful people. You know, they're just, they're just unfriendly. And you keep saying that about them, and it's amazing because that's what you're, as we would say, putting off toward them. And then whenever they get around you, they, they'll, 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 what they feel is that negative aspect, and they'll just start avoiding you. And they're not unfree. You see them, they're talking to everybody else. They're shaking hands, laughing and everything, and they get to you and they're going to tell you, how's it going? <laughs> yeah? And you're like, see, I told you. And they're, they're like, well, they're not that way to everybody else, just, just towards you. And you say, well, that's because that's what's really in them. You know, they're fake to everybody else. I mean, no, it's what you're putting in. You're, you're reaping what you were sowing. If you're saying they're that way, it doesn't mean they're that way to everybody, just to you. Why? Because you're the one saying about them. All right? Think about that. All right. Now, <clears throat> for example, if you consistently say that person has a bad attitude, they will start to develop a bad attitude towards you, even if they do not have one toward ever, anyone else. Right, what we just said. You get what you say. It is important that you say what you want, not just say what you have. You call those things that are not as though they were. Okay? Now, that goes all the way through. Now, we're going to look. we got a couple minutes here. We're going to move into this, and we're going to move very quickly through these next pages. Now, the reason uh, most of this will be on the website that we were talking about before, especially under the Mind Renewal uh, tab there, it'll be on there. But each one of these areas will also be an area that we will put this up first and then work from there of developing the thought, you might say. 
and actually bringing more into it and taking you through exercises on these things and all that. So uh, what, we're here, what we're seeing here is kind of the beginning and it's a start. So the first one is on repetition. Okay? There's an old saying that repetition is the mother of memory. That is true. Each time something is repeated, it, it is actually bringing out an old memory and adding to it and putting it at the forefront of your memories. As we've already seen, it is important to think the right thoughts, which are healthy thoughts. Now, <clears throat> repetition is actually part of the process of rewiring your brain circuitry. Each time you repeat something, you are actually creating not just another memory, but you are reinforcing and creating a stronger memory or thought. Each time you repeat something, you're making it easier to remember and repeat the next time a situation or incident reminds you of it. Does that make sense to you? So it, it keeps it close to the front. Now, we could look at this in a form of, uh, well, they're actually back now. They, they passed away for a while, but they're back. And that would be vinyl records, right? And now whenever I was growing up, that's what there was, right? And it was a great day whenever, you know, eight tracks came out, right? And it was so fun just pushing the button and changing the track, right? And then, then we went to cassette tape and then, of course, the CDs and all this. Now, but vinyl records, the thing about them, and that's why it, 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 the fact that we went from vinyl records to CDs, to me, was actually a step back because they can be easily damaged, just like vinyl records, right? Uh, cassette tapes, yeah, you could damage them too, but honestly, it's mostly protected. And what I loved about cassette tapes is you could take them out and put them in another player and start right where you left off, right? You, can't, you couldn't do that with a CD player, right? So anyway, just me griping. So, <laughs> but now, but now we got these vinyl records, right? And the vinyl records, as you play them, you have to be careful because you can scratch them, okay? Now, you need to think of wiring your brain just like a record because a record plays and it has a needle that drops on and it plays what's on that groove. The needle will play whatever is on the groove, right? Now, but you can also take that needle and scrape it across and now you have created a new groove on that record and every time that record goes around and gets that, it goes zoop, right? And that's exactly what you do whenever you start thinking toxic thoughts. You're actually engraving a new groove in your brain that will go from the good stuff and it hits this point and zip, it'll go right to the old stuff or the bad stuff or an old memory or something else and it'll go right to that. And, it, it, you, and the more you do that, the more you think that thought, the deeper you dig that engraving in there. And pretty soon it gets so deep that it is almost impossible to change, right? And so what you want to be able to do is make sure that you rewire it accurately. So that means that you have to actually start Every time it gets around to that point in the groove, you have to keep it on track and make it go through it until you create a new groove that it'll stay on. That will be deeper than the, the bad groove. Does all that make sense to you? Okay. Now, so what that means is if you have a habit and you're thinking, you, well, you know, man, I tell you what, I, I, I don't know why it is, but every, you know, every flu season, man, I'm the first one to catch it. Man, I'm the first. There. Okay, guess what? That's a bad groove. Isn't that right? And you're just digging that thing in there. And so to change that, you have to change what that says and go along with the Word of God. You know what? Uh, his words are life and health to my flesh. And I stay up and His Word stays up in me and I, I, I abide in Him and His Word abides in me and therefore I ask whatever will. So I, I've already asked I'm not going to get sick and I'm going to live well and I'm going to be healthy because His words are health and life to all my flesh. And so I'm going to have life and, you know, the, uh, the plague comes, uh, you know, around to a thousand here and ten thousand. It won't come near my dwelling. Right? And this is my dwelling. All right? My spirit lives in this body. So it won't come near this dwelling, all right? Or my house, or whatever. So you can say, but you have to completely regroove that thing. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, but you have to change it. Now this requires discipline. It doesn't happen overnight. Now the worst thing is for you to be around people. And listen, you need to be around people that will encourage you, stretch you, uh, correct you. Whenever you say something, they just correct. But it's in how you correct. Because right? you can correct in a way that will cause rebellion and make people either go the opposite direction and do it on purpose, right? Or avoid you altogether. And then you have eliminated your influence in their life. So you want to be able to correct in a way that actually makes people want to move forward, not give up. 
All right. So you need to be able to correct. And so, but that means for, a per, for you to accept correction from a person, it means that you trust them. That's what it means. You trust them that they're going to say the right thing, do the right thing, and that they're there to help you. Right? Now, that, that means you're not going to accept correction from just anybody. Right? Because there are some people that they live to correct you. Right? And you're not going to receive correction from them. Right? But you can receive, there are people that you can receive correction from and that you will be able to actually go to them and say, hey, if you, know, if you hear me uh, you know, saying the wrong thing or say anything you know, not correct, let me know. You know, just, just, just remind me. And, and so even here on staff, we've, we've done that and we, we try to do that on a regular basis, not in a sense of, oh, you know, you messed up. No, but just, oh, you know, shouldn't say that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. So we try to correct. Amen. But we're, why? Because we love each other here and we want all of us to, to grow into the fullness of Jesus. We don't want to, you know, it's not about, well, say the right thing. Don't say the wrong thing. No, it's that we want to, to people to grow and we want them to be all that they can be because they want to be who they're supposed to be. That's the only reason we do it. Now, if they don't care, why should we care, right? Because if, if they don't care, why would we say anything here at work? Because they're just going to go home and say something different anyway, right? So it's really not going to do much good. And so we, but we work together, but that means you have to trust people. Amen? All right, come on up, Miss Courtney. If you are considering partnering with us and would like to support our mission, please visit jglm.org forward slash partners. Proceeds will go toward the cost of the television broadcast and our mission work around the world. <laughs>